Hello and welcome back to The Catch-Up. I'm once again joined by the Rugby League Guru. How are you doing? I'm good, Catman Do Big day for us. We've only just got in the studio a little bit later than what we usually do. I know. It's nice. We mixed it up a little bit. We had a meeting outside mm. today, got to sit in the sun, just take in a bit of vitamin D, really needed it. I, uh, as you know, I'm a pretty vanilla sort of guy, <laughs> so I stepped a little bit out of my comfort zone today and I had a cookie with salt on it. Which blew me That away, is the God. most like boomer thing I've ever heard. Right? Because adding adding a bit of rock salt to a dessert is just the thing these days. Yeah. No, I don't think – I genuinely don't think I've ever done it before. Really? Yeah. Every dessert I make, there's always salt in it. Seriously? Yeah, because salt makes things more sweet. Ice cream? If you add salt to – I mean, I don't make ice cream. I'm talking about like baked goods. Okay. You add salt to all of them. Yeah. you. There is wow. salt in most of the uh, batters. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But, uh, yeah, sprinkle it on top. I don't know. Yeah, it's a bit yeah, exotic yeah. to me. Love sprinkling a bit of salt on top. Yeah, okay. I didn't mind it. It was good. And you know what? Until you mentioned it, I don't know if I actually would have noticed it. What do you think salted caramel is? Yeah, no, no, no for sure. I get within it. You're mocking me, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> what do no, we got no, today? No. We're going to talk about a few different things. I mean, this weekend of footy was insane. I was listening mm. to Bloke earlier and I think Kempi touched on it. There was just so much action this weekend, like from injuries to just moments, memorable moments in a lot of these games. Plus, I think we've we've seen some results over the weekend that have really shaped this coming weekend to be very exciting as well. Oh, I think there's a fair argument that round 26 was the most important round of the season as far as the Broncos season finishing, mm. the Dragons season not completely finished but close to finishing – uh, the you know this sets up a dolphin and knights playoff. So you have cool. a look at every team except for the Melbourne Storm. They're playing for something this weekend. Yeah. And Melbourne are playing Brisbane, who Bellamy loves to beat up on. So every game matters, and that's not even in, like for me. And I know people people disagree out there, but for me, I think the Roosters bowed out of premiership winner contention this year. What do you think over the weekend their yeah. injuries? Um, so yeah, I think I think this was the most important round of the season. I think. Uh, I think the longer the season goes, the more um, the more relevant this round will be. But yeah, cracker. Yeah, it's it's definitely hard to argue with that. I think there were just a lot of things that happened, and I actually saw a post earlier, which I'm going to try and find. But they kind of listed for each of the seven because you mm. mentioned Storm at the top. They're they're, yep. they're pretty safe right there. But every other team is fighting for something right now. And someone had actually outlined what each of those things are. So I'll see if I can find that. But in the meantime, let's talk about. Uh, Look, we, we made a joke earlier that yeah. it feels like we've talked about Sean Johnson for about 15 weeks uh, consecutively, which might be true, but he officially played his last game yeah. for the Warriors and what a send-off. I think the performance from the team too, without a doubt, much better than the game the week before and I think that's the send-off that he deserved. But let's just talk about that experience in general for SJ the fan turnout, incredible. The signage, even better. His wife was included in one of those. <laughs> so good, uh, yeah. But tell me your thoughts on on the SJ send off. I'll tell you what, uh, a bit of a weird one for me because I was uh, I had my best mate's bucks that night, and mm. I was glued to my phone all weekend because I was playing my Supercoach draft game, and I was playing against Dallin Watenis Lesniak. So when I what? No, like, oh. like sorry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> The guy that I was versing had Dallin Watenis Lesniak in his team. I am for the zero point zero zero one percent of the audience that. that's sitting there <laughs> didn't understand that. That's what I meant. I'll be by completely that. honest with you. I started looking up that post that I was mentioning <laughs> earlier, and all I heard was I was playing against Dallin Watenis Lesniak, and I was just like. Well, okay, I, I know he helped. I thought it was a weird reaction. Yeah, I thought you're either too. leaning into this way too far or yeah, something's going that's wrong crazy. here. Sorry but it's funny. That. I actually saw. I didn't get to watch the entire game live. I was at the races. I was doing stuff. I was off my head, to be completely honest with you. And I, I, there was a TV in the distance that I could see it. And when I saw the try get set up, I thought to myself, fuck, that's a good pass. Mm-hmm. And when Dallin scored, I had a little temper tantrum and just turned mm-hmm. around. I didn't actually realise it was the last play of the game to win it. Oh, wow. So then when I sat back and watched the game the day after, oh, my oh, – like I'm, I'm filthy I didn't get to watch it live. What what a moment. And yeah. I said it on Bloke Yes, I Cat – the thing that I loved about SJ's game there was that the first try he set up was old SJ, bounce off the right foot, make a break, set someone up. And then you got the older SJ in the back end where put in a nice kick on early tackle that was perfection, you couldn't defend it, threw a nice ball at the end. You just got to see 
a little summary of 15 years of SJ, which I just, I, I, I like, as I said, I'm filtered. I didn't get to watch it live, but watching it back on Sunday, I knew what happened. I was still on the edge of my seat and super excited. Uh, incredible stuff. Absolutely incredible. It was such a cool moment. Yeah. I And that's what I love about the game is that things can turn so quickly like that. And like things can turn so quickly, but also, of course, his last game is at Shark Park, the only other place he ever called home. And he comes yeah. up with that. Like, well, I'm, they were, they were The comments were that the NRL script writers just couldn't have gotten it better that weekend. I'll tell you what, if you're one of those fucking um, – what, theorists conspiracy, there, theorists. conspiracy theorists, yeah. and you wanted to make an argument, you can make a cracking one there. But that's just that, Honestly, that's a sign could. of a great game. Um, so yeah, I thought I thought that was incredible. I I, I loved watching that all play out with SJ. Yeah, uh, you mentioned the the signs in the crowd. Yeah, our uh, our very well, not our very own, but part of our extended family. She's a cousin of ours. Old Clementine Cassidy uh, doing great things. She uh, she held a sign up uh, and got onto the Warriors Instagram. She did. That was so cool. And then you shared it on your, your I fucking page, love Clem. I She's hilarious. Yeah, I met her at Magic Ground and I was uh, – she's a bit – bit. she had a couple. I would love to meet Clem outside of Magic Ground. It's the only <laughs> place I – actually, I think we'll see her this weekend, uh, which will be exciting. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, it's Magic Ground. Everyone's a bit loose. But yeah. love's a good time, Clem, and I, I love her. She's unreal. So yeah. good stuff. No. I don't know – why she's a Warriors fan? Is she a Kiwi? Is that I don't know what this. I know Tim's brother also wears a Warriors jersey everywhere he goes. Shout out to you, Tom. I know you'll be watching this, and I think it's fucking weird. And I will let you know that this weekend as well. You're from Canberra. What's doing? It is, it is a bit confusing that one. He loves SJ, yeah. Tommy. The spy absolutely loves SJ. Do you know I have asked him, and I can't remember the story. I which would is really be annoying shocked me. if I haven't asked him to. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, one of the signs, as I mentioned, was Sean Johnson's wife who <laughs> said, I still get to play with Sean Johnson. Did you see what SJ posted on his story? Yeah. He said something about sleeping in the other bed. Or... She texted him and said, you sleep in the other bed, I want to stretch out. And he's like, we're on tonight. Then that, he said, maybe not. I thought it was fucking great. Oh, that's uh, so funny. Yeah, unreal, SJ. Uh, as we said, you know, we, we don't need to repeat ourselves, but for me... It's just the influence that SJ has had over such a long period of time on our game and uh, we've been very, very lucky to have SJ. And I still remember Cap being in, I want to say, year eight and the first time I saw those touch highlights mm. and it was grainy as fuck, looked like it was filmed on a potato and you just – I, I, like I would have watched that at least once every, I would say, three months since the day I saw it what wow. was close to 20 years ago. Incredible. Yeah. That it, it really is incredible, but um, if you if you just took a clip from that episode from that video, I would know where that is from from the rest of my life without wow. a doubt. And I think all blokes my age would. That's it's wild. just fucking iconic. Yeah, I, and it's so cool to say that. You know what? I was going to quote someone, Winston, who yeah. said uh, that the Earth is something like four billion years old, <laughs> and aren't we aren't we just honoured to know that we are on the Earth at the same time as Matt Bird? And I think the same can be said for Sean Johnson. Oh, for sure. And like just going back to that that video, like it's so cool to see a guy that you see as this YouTube person out there to go from that teenager that you thought, wow, that's fucking cool, to coming into the NRL, making yeah. his NRL debut, go to grand finals, win golden boots and have the career he had. It's a, it's a really cool sort of start to finish. He was the first real like YouTube mm, superstar we true. had in rugby league and there's going to be so many to come. It's going to be a very hot field. Yeah, he really paved the way for that content creator. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and I – there, you know, there, there's probably uh, – he's uh, he's arguably got the best one up there but as far as the best highlight you could ever make oh. – like, like, like GI is obviously incredible, but I think guys like Benji and Sean Johnson who have got the running, the stepping, the passing and the kicking, you can just get it all into one. Uh, I just – very hard to beat SJ. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. It's – I think it's just one of these weird things that everybody just agrees with in the game. You know, like a lot of things are contentious. A lot of people – a lot of people like to debate, but there's just a general love for Sean Johnson, which I think is a really nice thing. It's a special thing and there's yeah. no like – I, I just can't imagine an avenue where anyone could not like SJ. Like there's there, there, there's other players that I love, but from other perspectives I can say, oh, okay, well, like, like there's not many teams that hate the Warriors. Like they don't have a huge rivalry with other teams. Uh, so like there's really no reason to hate SJ. I mean, even Sharkies fans, like uh, that, that they're the only fans I thought, oh, it didn't go overly well at the Sharks, but you saw them the other night, mm. how much they embraced him in a game that could really fuck their season, a loss that could really screw up their season. It could yeah. cost them a home final. Yeah. Um, and still just 
all the love in the world for SJ. Yeah. So credit to him. As we said, the NRL script writers did a great job. Yeah. Now let's talk about another script that was written beautifully. It's it's very unfortunate, of course, and our thoughts are with Ty Munro for his loss mm. that he experienced last week, both his mum and his uncle passing away in the same week it's under tragic circumstances as well as far as I know and uh, I mean no one it, it's unimaginable really but he committed to playing against mm. Penrith on Friday night he said that he would play for his mum and his uncle regardless of what he'd been through and he put on a spectacular performance and I just wanted to I guess just put some to shine a light on it because yeah. it, I was very emotional watching him and I've had the privilege of getting to know Ty here and there and having a few conversations with him um, and I'm so impressed with the way that he's carried himself through all of this. I can't imagine how difficult it is but to see him score a try, to put on a spectacular performance for the fans but then to also see so many other uh, players get behind yeah. him and also write his mum's name on their wristbands and just – I think just the community spirit in all of this is a really beautiful thing that's come out of a tragic circumstance. Yeah, for sure. And I think, like, I think we look at these, you know, I'm, I'm guilty of it at times too. And like, I think you just need to remind yourself when you're looking at a guy like Tom Munro, like you're watching a 19 year old. <laughs> like it really is for not like, I, I said it last year, like Ty Munro pretty much went from Harold Matthews to first grade yeah. in about 18 months, which is just, we hear these stories all the time, like occasionally of these guys doing rugby league and I think you sort of take it for granted just how hard it is. Like yeah. for someone that goes and watches, you know, like my brother who I consider to be a very good footballer, it's taken him five years to get through those grades. Mm -hmm. And in that time there's been a thousand kids that have fallen to the side because it's too hard and time manages to do it in 18 months. It's yeah. just, like he is just a freak of nature, Ty Munro. And you know what, full, full credit to him, Kat, like you're – You've got to have a certain mindset to rise through the grades like that and you've got to have a particular sort of mindset to be able to do what he did the other night. Like yeah. that was the worst 48 hours he is ever going to have in his life. Yeah. It's probably the worst 48 hours you could imagine having in your life. And then Penrith at Penrith, he scored two tries. You're unlucky not to score a third. The kid's just – he's a freak. He is uh, – yeah, he's – I posted about him when he debuted last year that, mm. you know, this is a debut you're going to want to see because I genuinely think he can turn into one of the biggest superstars in I our game. I couldn't agree more. And I think the other thing as well, Kat, with him, we're actually talking about today in our Uber over here, like you can just – he's been in the, in the league for a year. He's been off – he hasn't, that's his first game this season because mm -hmm. he did his jaw in the preseason or yeah. something in the preseason. Collarbone, sorry. Collarbone, yeah. yeah. He, he was injured in preseason. It's crazy. So even with a collarbone injury restricting a lot of what he was able to do, he looks like he's put on five or six kilos mm -hmm. in muscle over the offseason and he's 19. He's going to be fully grown in five years. He, he, he's going to be an absolute juggernaut and if I, was a, if I was you, South Sydney fan, next year Campbell Graham and him on the same edge. Mm, stunning. And you could make that your right edge for the next six, seven years. They are going to be so hard to handle and, yeah, I reckon Ty Munro, he'll be a winger for now. Wouldn't surprise me if he's eventually a fullback. I think he could play centre. I think he's going to be one of the genuine superstars in our game. Yeah, his, his natural ability. It's something that we often talk about is there's a lot of hard work that goes into this and then there's also that element of just getting it. Yeah. And you can tell he just gets it. You know, when he was running down the sideline the other day and I had a few people that messaged me on Instagram and said the same thing and I agree with all of them and I'm not saying he is the next GI. I know. I but he had that coming. GI feel where it was like, I know you can't fucking tackle me. Yeah. One, I know you can't catch me. Two, yeah. if you do, I know you won't bring me down. Yeah. And he just, to be at his age, the lack of experience he has, the lack of games he's played this year, that was his first game back, Penrith at Penrith. It's the biggest challenge we've ever had in rugby league. Yeah, he was about. New South Wales Cup last week or something. Like <sighs> that was the the – Second time he's played in months. Yeah, and yeah, it's just, yeah, it's it's incredible his rise, and he's just at the beginning. And yeah, I, I genuinely think he'll go down as one of the best outside backs we've seen. Uh, he's a New South Welshman as well. I think he will play Origin one day. Yeah, me too. Uh, and yeah, he's his athletic ability. <laughs> yeah, and, and you, you know what I find too with cat like guys his age that sometimes an early injury isn't a bad thing. It sort mm -hmm. of teaches you to look after yourself. Sometimes it can be a little warning shot. And, and like I'm not saying that Ty wasn't already taking care of himself, or whatever, but I think sometimes 
it can be a good warning shot to sort of yeah. you got to stay on top of all this shit, all these sort of things can happen. And he's obviously responded to that he's gone and put on a stack of muscle. Yeah. Um, but that, that was the thing that I took away from the other night. We were spoken about it. Fox, one of the fastest guys I've ever seen, he put on muscle, which he needed to, and it slowed him down just a little bit. I feel mm-hmm. like he's started to get that pace back now, but it slowed him down. It's hard because he was he's also injured and recovering. 100%. From- yeah, yeah. But I remember that, that year that Addo Carr came back mm. with a bit more weight, it slowed him. Like he was still top 10 fast in the game. Slowed him down a little bit. I, fuck, I reckon Ty looked faster the other night. Yeah. It's but I think like having seen Ty in person as well, yeah. he's still not a big guy. Uh, compared yeah, you, to- You didn't see him not long ago, did you? No, I saw him a few weeks ago at, yeah. at Belmore. He was he was watching Fox because I remember watching him play Oz Tag last year, and that's when he's just in shorts and t-shirt, yeah. just thinking, like you are so small. Yeah, he was he was because I went to the New South Wales Cup final last year, yeah, and that's where I saw him play the first time, and he was right on the wing, so I saw it was yeah. very close to him, and his physique was l- as lanky as Saab, but Scored not the match as winner, tall. Didn't he? Yeah, he did. Yeah. But um, as lanky as Saab, but not as tall. Yeah. So that that skinny kind of look, but he's really gained a lot of mass and he knew he needed to as well. Yeah. I'll never forget that grand final. Like I'd said for weeks, Ty's just one of those guys. He's a bit like Kyle Felt. The ball will just find him at the right moment. And, of course, he was there to score that grand final. I posted something about it. Everyone went, oh, he did was put the ball down. I'm like. Oh, come on. There's certain guys in this game that they are just always in the right place at the right time and you can say it's luck but it doesn't happen. But you know what's also hilarious? They don't get lucky for 15 years no. like some of these guys and he's going to be one of them. But those comments about wingers just putting the ball down, they're doing what they're paid to do. Yes. You're paid to be in the right place and to be able to place the ball down when needed. Yeah. If you're not doing that, you're not doing the job of a if winger. If he was in the wrong place and it went behind him, you'd call him a moron. Exactly. It's It sounds simple but that is what a winger is there to do. Yeah. If, if it looks simple... You're doing your job well. If you make it look easy, it says a lot about how well yes, you play. Exactly right. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of making it look easy, Burden bombs, you know, Matt Burden, <laughs> he's just he's had so many incredible moments this season. He's come in clutch for the Bulldogs so many times. I want to move on to Matt Burden, but also specifically to Winston Neville meeting him. This is really wholesome content. Uh, Winston is, you know, the biggest Bulldogs fan I think that I've ever come across, I've ever crossed paths with. His commitment to the game is unrivaled, second to none. And he met Matt Burden over over the weekend and what I love about this photo is that he's also holding one of the big Matt Burden heads. I love Winston. um, How can you not? And you know what, this will sound so fucking stupid but just ever since he came in here at the start of the season and the Bulldogs were down the bottom and he was so excited about them he was – Literally everything he said has come true so far. I know. If anything, Winston it was probably He was unders. a Bulldogs Nostradamus. Yeah, but like even what he said was like, oh, you know, they'll, they'll get better, they'll improve. And I was like, oh, mate, you've been a bit over the top. In my head I was like, oh, geez, I don't know, Winston, a bit over yeah, the top. But yeah. they've actually even exceeded what he was saying. But he was the only one saying it. He's, he's nailed it all. And it was almost like, like what, what, watching him now and what he's doing in content, and this is – a completely ridiculous thing to say, but I almost get like a proud dad feel where I'm like, fuck yeah, Winston. Yeah. You've no, nailed this. I, you cop so agree. much crap and you've just stuck by your team, stuck by your team, and now it's all it's all coming to a point. I remember actually about 18 months ago, Kat, I was out with um, Roasty and we're just talking about content, who's doing things, and I remember he gave Winston a very big rap. And I'll be honest with you, I didn't know who Winston was at this point. This is about 18 months ago and Roasty's got a really good eye for this sort mm. of stuff. And I remember as soon as Roshi said that, I went, okay, I'll, I'll start to pay attention. Um, and, yeah, absolutely now Winston, he's actually the proud dad, to be fair, Roasty. He uh, is. Winston, not to be confused with you, though. Not to be confused with me, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, he's just doing tremendous thing, Winston. And you can see that, like, I love that Canterbury have started to collab things with him. Uh, the club's getting around him, which full credit to Canterbury. is fa- It's fantastic. It's how it should be done. Um, I think that's how you can sort of – you can see the good clubs at the moment, Cut, that mm. – don't think they're above their fans. Yeah. That lean into their fans, which I love to say. It, it's very true. Yeah. It's very true. You do see that. It's very wholesome interactions. Um, but what I f- forgot to mention is the fact that I believe Matt Burden gave <laughs> Winston Neville his headgear. Very good. You so just good, know huh? that that is the center of his shrine at home now. Yeah, as it should be. Yeah. And you know, yeah, I, I, and you can see the way that Matt Burton was interacting with him. That was genuine appreciation. It's, and you know, I, I see a lot of, how do I word this? I see a lot of fans of clubs that when they're losing everything, they jump down their team's throat and they're very quick to sell their players down the river. 
I love the way that Winston just backs his team in no matter what. But he's also honest. Mm. But he does it in a way that's not when they lose, it's it's not, oh fuck you, it's over, blah, blah. It's it's you know, he puts it's it all in a way. It's constructive. Always. Yeah, I like it. And I appreciate that. He's not just always beer and Skittles, as we like to say. He's, he's honest about it all. Uh so yeah, I love the way that uh Winston does his work and fuck it through me for six when I found out a few months ago he was working at the Dragons yeah, and doing right? an running their or social media. Hilarious. I know. Must like be tearing what? him apart. Uh, he's trying to get his creds up to get the Bulldogs job. <laughs> I'll back that. Good on him. <laughs> I, mate, I, 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 I don't know what Winston's plans are or whatnot, but fuck, if I was Canterbury, why not bring him into the social team? Mm. What, what, what do you got? You, nothing to lose, everything to gain. It's true. I like it. Speaking of nothing to lose but everything to gain. The I'm so Spoon Bowl about this. Oh, yes. is on Friday. This is the clash between Parramatta and the West Tigers. Now it's sold out. Yeah. Like, can we Wild. just talk about the fact that the Spoon Bowl sold out? Yeah, and uh, you know what? I, I personally think it's got a lot to do with like roasting and stuff getting behind it. Uh, Without a doubt. Like Hammy, Roasty, all these guys have got behind it. It's been a big talking point on like podcasts. I mean, I was actually very keen to go out there. I'm not going to quite be able to make it work. Uh, we've got a bit on this weekend. We do, which we will um, get into shortly. We'll get into that, yeah. So uh, I won't be able to make it out there. But uh, yeah, to sell this out, Spoon Bowl, I love it. And you know what? The West Tigers in the air, well... I know for a fact neither club's overly keen to lean into the spoon bowl thing, which you, which I don't hold that against them. Uh, but I love that they're not leaning against it either. No. They're not like voicing it. But they'll they'll get around this and whatnot. It'll mean a lot to both clubs. I know if, like I was out at Parramatta on the weekend and talking to the fans. They're all very excited about it. It's been a shit season. And you know what? It sucks that you're in contention for a spoon. It's awful. But fuck, enjoy this. Have a bit of a laugh. That's what sport's about at the end of the day, enjoying yourself. Yeah, I couldn't agree more and I think at the end of the day, let's be real, ticket sales are important Yeah, and if you have to market it as the spoon bowl and, and celebrate it for what it is, then so be it and sell tickets and get people to attend and, and make it a fun event because at yeah. the end of the day, that's what it is. It's sport. It brings people together and whatever the, the storyline is, that's it. But isn't it great that like what you just described there is the NRL and the clubs – purpose yeah. whereas like content creators are kind of doing it for them getting around this so spoon bowl and all like building a but how often do you see it? that the content creator is the first to find what that narrative yeah, what it is, is. Yeah. and then it turns into something off the back of that yeah, it's unreal it's, yeah. it's, it's how it should be and it's how it will be it'll become more and more the norm in the future so yeah, yeah. and as i said roasty he's just got an eye for this shit he's a fucking genius very lucky to have roasty yeah. as a mate no, Roasty's a genius and I was just telling you before that uh, it's probably my favourite page and I know I've mm. said this an, numerous times throughout the season but it is probably my favourite NRL page other than Rugby League Guru, of course. I was course. about to say, you're, you're dangerously close to a firing here. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I, I think that obviously my page is very much for the Rugby League nerd but even me, like I just love to sit back and watch the shit that Roasty comes up with and just from spending some time with him and just seeing how his brain works because he's not like – Roasty – He's not a crazy footy fan. Like he but doesn't almost, like having the same conversations no, but that he, I have with Tim that I have with him sort of thing. Yeah, but I think that's why he appeals to the everyday yeah. fan so much because he finds memes and ways of explaining yep. things in in other ways. So it's not just for the footy head. It's here's a Marvel meme that also replicates what this means in a game. And I don't know, that, that works for fans. It works, yeah. It's unreal and, it, and it, you need that lighthearted – a, a, you know, a, approach to the game. It's uh, it's sensational. I'll tell you what, like some of his best work I think too is in the uh, punters and dribblers page where he posts under his own name. He comes up with some unreal gear in there. So good. It's, I, it's so weird in that page. Like I can look at a post without a name and work and I can normally get a vibe if it's a Bellotti, oh, a Roasty. You can pick the Scotty Bellotti You can pick the Scotty, Scotty Bellotti from a mile away. Shout out to yeah. him. He's over in Bali at the moment causing Is havoc. He? Yeah, he'd be enjoying himself. Well, he, he still has time for a Hainsey post. He does. He'll yeah. find time. Don't worry. <laughs> One of the greats. I yeah. met Hainsey the other day. Did you? I met him on Sunday. I was hung over. His, this is how hung over I was. I walked into the Wentworth Park and he was leaving. And he's like, oh, we're going to the Roosters game. And I was like, oh, fuck. Shock. Hainsey going to the Roosters game. Well, he was coming game. from the Roosters reserve grade going to first grade. The commitment. Uh, and I said, oh, fuck, I thought your game was on the Gold Coast. That's how hungover I was. I thought the Roosters were playing the Gold Coast, not the Raiders. Oh, I was, And I days. walked away and then I looked at my phone and I went, 
he must think I'm a fucking idiot, which is fair. <laughs> he's, he's, he's saying, saying and you know what? He was too fraud. polite to say, "You're a moron. You're We're a, not even playing them. You're a fraud guru. You're a fraud. Yeah, yeah, yeah which I absolutely love. It's great. Oh, Good that's fella. so funny. Oh, okay. Now, speaking of you being hungover, that's because you were at the you had a you had a big night. You yeah. mentioned the Bucks, but you were at the Parramatta game. You were at the Field Club. Now, the Parramatta game and that result against the Dragons was huge. When yeah. we talk about pivotal results over the weekend, that would be one of the main ones. Because it has made the last game of the regular season between the Knights and the Dolphins a sudden death game. They're playing for a spot in the eight. In my opinion, what happened over the weekend was close to perfection. Yeah. The fact that the Dolphins won made it heaps interesting, made that Knights game perfect. The fact that the Knights won uh, makes that a playoff. Uh, Yeah, just a lot of things that happened that I think just make this week so much more interesting. Even like the Roosters injuries, like it makes the Souths game interesting. It sort of evens up the playing field. I I, I think Souths win this weekend. I I genuinely think And you've been saying that. You have for a few weeks you've been saying that that they're going to play different footy against the Roosters. Form goes out the window for this game every single year. Yeah. Um, What were – oh, yeah, the Parramatta game. Yeah, great out there. The field club was sensational. We had uh, my best mate's Bucks out there. Shout out to him. James had the camera out doing a bit of content for us. And uh, my mate goes, oh, get me doing a goosey. Does his first goosey, stumbles at the end of it and bites through his own tongue. So he spent the next 14 hours bleeding profusely, which I thought was hilarious. Uh, but, yeah, out of the field club, it was sensational. Uh, you know, drinks flowing, food getting about. Uh, 88 points scored. It was amazing. I had Zach Lomax as my super coach captain, my draft captain, and my triple stake in about even. So I had a great afternoon. Did very well. Uh, and, yeah, the field club Incredible. just always kicking goals. I think it's, it is the last field club of the season. Uh, I think they've sold out every single game in the field club. So, wow. Yeah. Keen very, to, very happy keen to hopefully get there for a Parramatta game next I can't believe season. you haven't made your debut yet. I've not. I said I, I've done the fe- a similar experience. A live show? For the A-League. Oh, you've done the A-League. Well, yeah, I, yeah, I did yeah, the yeah, – yeah. obviously I went to your live show. Yeah. Um, but I've experienced Combank in, in that kind of capacity, but an NRL, NRL game with the field club would be super we'll cool. We'll have to get out there. James is coming in tomorrow. We'll have to – yeah. Sort you out for next year. I'll put, in a, I'll put in a bit of a word. Game. Now, the reason I bring up this Parramatta game and that result against the Dragons mm. is because it's made the Knights-Dolphins game mm. so interesting and that's where we're going to be on Sunday. Oh, I cannot wait for this. Yeah. I cannot wait for it. Uh, up there at Newcastle, uh, it's going to be tremendous. I love as well that it's Wayne Bennett coming back to Newcastle. Oh, this, speaking of storylines, <laughs> right, when you think of this Newcastle home game against the Dolphins coached by Wayne Bennett, yep. it's potentially his first finals with the dra- uh, with the Dolphins. Um, oh, It's just poetic. If he can end Brisbane's season into Newcastle's season two weeks in a row, Holy. Call it a day. See you later. Like it couldn't get any better for He's him. He's won essentially. It genuinely couldn't get any better yeah. for him. Like that is just incredible stuff. It's uh, so cool. It's so cool. Yeah, and you have a look at like <laughs> if the Dolphins win this week, that will mean that the only team Wayne Bennett has ever coached that's playing finals footy this year is the Dolphins, which is – when you think about some of the big clubs he's coached, St. George, Brisbane, Newcastle, yeah. uh, South Sydney who yeah. aren't there as well. Yeah. Unbelievable stuff, and yeah, what a uh, and he's uh, he's also kicked a couple of them out, which makes yes, it even better. Yeah, yeah, and I'll tell you what, I'm sure it'll come out in the off season or whatever, but I can't say too much. But the approach that Wayne took this week, honestly, unbelievable. It's like a Ted Lasso episode. The yeah. extent he went to to get them up for the Brisbane game, yeah is like very few things I've heard about. A re- a, an absolute Wayne masterstroke. I think there'll be more details come out. I think the Dolphins will talk about it a little bit more during the off-season for content and stuff. But uh, Do you mean the, the changes in per- personnel? Yeah, but just what he did during the week and how he got him up for it. Yeah, I had a little chat to some people at the Dolphins. I, I think they'll do it in their own avenues with yeah. content. Yeah. So we might just let that go. But honestly, like – Phenomenal! The efforts he went to to get them up for this Brisbane game and then for them to come in as outsiders at Suncorp Stadium yeah. against the Broncos who a week before said we'll play finals. Yeah. They bet them 40 to 6. Crazy. Unbelievable. Yeah. Watching that game was really cool because it got me super excited for Sunday and yeah. I knew – I think it was an interesting game to go do content, content at because we knew it could either be a dead rubber – and there's nothing to play for and it's just both teams' last games or it's this, which yeah. is the perfect outcome. There's there's real emphasis on the result. It's really important. They're both going to be bringing their A game. So 
It's perfect. Yeah, it's special stuff. I yeah. can't wait for Sunday. Yeah. So if you're up at McDonald Jones, look out for us. If you're not, then just follow our socials. For if you're not, content. you should be. But follow our socials. Yeah. Okay. Good. Guess Roo. I need a bounce back here. You do need a bounce back. Gee, I tell you what, last week was tough. Last week was tough. Shout yeah. out to Dame Weston, wherever you might be. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to NRL Odd Stats, who uh, yeah. is running circles around you because it, it's not my brain power, it's his. He's giving it to me. I'll make sure you go follow NRL Odd Stats, guys. Puts out some tremendous stuff. I think if you can have him and Rando on, on, on your following page, have them both chiming in for you. Yeah. Uh, they just produce some unbelievable things. Yeah, so make sure you go sorted. and follow. Uh, he's always helped me out for a long time, giving me little things here and there. Uh, he was on the Kai Pierce Paul try scoring train with me, so we both mm-hmm. were on the pain train there, which was very tough. But uh, a champion fellow doing some really, really good things. So support uh, content creators that are putting out good work and putting a lot of time and effort in. And I know from – not from talking to our old stats, but talking to Rando, how much work he puts into his stuff. Yeah. In order for odd stats to produce the same quality, he has to be putting in the same amount of work. So full credit to him. Absolutely. So I hope he's kind to me. <laughs> with that said – here is another guest we brought to you by NRL Odd Stats. Oh, okay. Let's First clue. Like, yeah. Born in Boona. Mad. Awesome. Yeah, Queensland, New South Wales. Sounds Queensland. One club player from 2004 to 2008. I was a one club player from 2004 until 2008. Yeah. And then moved to another club or? Oh. Christ, okay. Um, where's Boona? Is that Queensland, New South Wales? Can we do a bit of yeah, I'm looking. Dioring for me here? So one club. Boona is in Queensland. Yeah, I thought so. Okay, so Queenslander that played between 2004 and 2008 for one club. club. He played 71 games for this club. Sure. Scored four tries in his second NRL game. Scored four tries in his second NRL game from 2004 to 2008, played 71 games. So four tries, probably had to be an outside back, played for one club. I'm going to have a guess. Is it Marshall Chalk? It is. Yeah, beautiful. Wow. Top that NRL at stats. Marshall Chalk, I remember the night he scored four tries. I, I had a feeling because very few players score four tries If it like wasn't that. for that, okay, what, what, what were the other clues? So I was going to follow that up with played three in three final series. That wouldn't have helped me, yep. On the wing, so you were right outside okay, back, yeah, yeah. obviously. Played full back, centre, wing and second row and signed to the Super League for 2009. He played in the second row too, did he, Marshall Chalk? Yeah, can you see how many games he played in the second row there? Can you say that or not? Let me have a look. If, are you on, what, what website are you on? I was on the NRL Odd Stats provided stats. Really? Uh, he provided those for me. Oh, well, well he, he actually provides Yeah, you. he gives me wow. the clues. But then I also have his page open. So I can't tell you – no, I can't tell you at what position mm. he played. Yeah, right. Wow, I didn't realise he played second row. Marshall Chalk, that's a little throwback. Timmy Williams would have got that one. Big oh, Marshall big, Chalk yeah, guy. Yeah, big Raiders guy. When he played for the Super League, who did he play for? He I played for say, Celtic. Uh, who? Celtic. 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 Yeah, I wouldn't have got that. Okay. I actually think that might be like reserve grade over there. I could be wrong. Don't shit down my throat, English Super League fans. Um, okay. Very good. One all. I don't, I don't think it's second. Starts. I don't think it's, it's – he played against Hull and Leeds and Salford and Warrington and oh, okay, Huddersfield right. and all that. They might have uh, – It's not the Centurions? No? Okay. Good gear. The Celtic Crusaders. Good gear. One all. Love that. Love that. Well, that's Beautiful. it. I mean, awesome. we've thankful once again to NRL Odd Stats for providing these. He will be, I suppose, sponsoring the next couple yes, of episodes yeah, of yeah, the yeah. Catch Up because he's provided such awesome uh, guest ruse. But for anyone who wants to provide one, feel free to send it through. Um, but yeah, that's great. Marshall Chalk is niche. Marshall as Chalk fuck. is so niche. Shout bro. out to you. So How niche. All, All right. right. Well, that wraps up the Catch Up for this week. As I said. We're going to be at the Knights-Dolphins game on Sunday. So if you're up in Newey for the game, look out for us. Come say hi. And if you're not, then just follow along for some great content. We're actually going up with Classic Sportswear Mm. who have been 
awesome sponsors this year. They've given us so many cool opportunities. A lot of the interviews and opportunities that we've had with different clubs has come through Classic Sportswear. So big thank you to them. We've got a few more things planned before the end of the season. So and It's their 90 year anniversary It is as their well. 90 Just, year. They've been a very special part of rugby league for a long time, Classic. Yeah. Uh, like I've even got my first ever rugby league jersey in there from 1995 that wouldn't fit on my left finger. Um, that's a Classic jersey as well with the old school so logo. Cool. And uh, yeah. yeah, we've got some more stuff lined up with Classic, so stay tuned for that. It's going to be really cool. Yeah, it will be. But uh, thank you so much for joining us for the catch-up and we will catch you, I guess, for Teamless Tuesday. No, we won't because that's going to come out before this. Nice. Well done. <laughs> oh, no, not me forgetting the timing on everything. Bye. See you later.